metric system and measurements. The metric system was originally invented by the French in the super late 1700s or 1799 to be exact. So it's been around for over 200 years. Every single country in the world uses the metric system except for, you got it, the United States. The metric system was designed to unify all the different ways of measurements. Prior to the institution of the metric system, each different province in France, each different country in the world had its own way of measuring. And the creation of the metric system and the uh, adoption of the metric system by the world allows now scientists to compare things completely with each other using the same measurements. It brings uniformity to the world. It's a very easy system, and it's based on 10. 10, 100, 1,000, 10, 1, 1 tenth, 1 hundredth. Conversions between the metric system, one unit of the metric system, to another is basically a matter of sliding the decimal point either one way or the other. Here are some examples of SI, or Système International, base units. For time, we use the unit of second. The abbreviation we use is a small s. Having a, a capital or a small font is really important in this system. Length is measured in meters. The abbreviation for meters is a small m. Mass, which is a measure of the quantity of matter within something, is measured in grams. Small g. Weight is measured in newtons. Capital N. Temperature is measured in Kelvin or Celsius. The abbreviation is K. Kelvin is the official unit. However, many scientists still use the Celsius system as well. Volume is measured in liters. Big L. So let's take a look at some important measures. Weight and mass. Weight is a force. Mass is the quantity of matter in an object. They are not the same thing. They are, however, related to each other. Weight is dependent on gravity. Mass, however, is not. Mass is a measure of the quantity of matter in an object, which never changes. The quantity of matter inside your body is the same, regardless if you are on the Earth, or on Mars, or on Jupiter. However, your weight is going to be completely different because the gravities on those three planets are completely different from each other. So here we have a little guy on Earth. He has a hundred. A hundred what? Let's see if he goes to a new planet. On the new planet on the moon, this number now turns 16.6. .6. That has to be his weight. His matter would never change, whether it goes on Earth or on the moon. However, his weight does. In measuring metric, we use a number of different tools. One of the most basic ones, of course, is the meter stick. Pictured here is a meter stick on the upper part of the stick, this right here. And on the lower part, we still have the old system, the English system of inches. A meter stick is approximately almost the same length as a yard. So if you look at the door and you measure from the floor to the door, that's about a meter. This is how we measure distance. If we are measuring volume, then we would use a graduated cylinder. Pictured below is a graduated cylinder with water in it. Notice that the water has a smiley face here to here. When water is in a graduated uh, cylinder, it creates what's called a meniscus. And we always measure the volume from the bottom of the meniscus. So let's do some comparison. A mile is related to what in the metric system? Kilometer. Yard. If you said meter, 
You'd be right. A fluid ounce. In the metric system, a fluid, a fluid ounce is a small measure of volume in the English system and turns into a milliliter in the metric system. Quart, which is a larger measure of volume, is more equivalent to a liter. Pound, we measure pounds with kilograms. Ounces, grams. Here is a depiction of how you do conversions within the metric system. The base is always one. In the middle here, you see meter, gram, liter. If you go bigger and have 10 meters, you would have a decameter. If you went 100 meters, that would be a hectometer. If you went 1,000 meters, that would be a kilometer. The way that we differentiate one unit from the next is with the prefixes. The prefixes tell you exactly what the number is. But what if we want to, instead of bigger, we want to go smaller? There we have one-tenth, or decimeters. One one-hundredth, or centi. Great way to remember that is how many cents are there in a dollar? There's a hundred. One one-thousandth is a milli. If I was going to convert from one unit to the next, all I need to do is picture the staircase in my mind and walk up or down. The direction that I walk tells me the direction that the decimal point needs to move. Which do you think is larger, a kilometer or a millimeter? If you said kilometer, of course you'd be right. Liter or deciliter. The word deca and deci are very similar to each other, but don't get them mixed up. A deci is one-tenth of a liter, so the liter is bigger. A hectogram versus a centigram. Well, the centigram is one one-hundredth of a gram, and a hectogram is a hundred grams, so the hectogram. Take a look at this ruler. It shows both the English and the metric systems. Using the ruler, estimate how many centimeters are in an inch. What unit would you use to measure each of the following? Length of your pencil centimeters. Distance from Chicago to New York. If you said kilometers, you'd be right. Mass of a person, kilograms. The width of a window, meters or centimeters. Volume of a milk jug, liters. The mass of a very small, tiny insect, ants, kilograms. How about the amount of medicine that's in a pill, milligrams. Temperature of a room, Celsius. Length of the class period, minutes. Length of the lad table, meters. Kelvin and Celsius are related to each other. The Celsius system was created to equate the temperature at which water freezes was arbitrarily said to be zero. The temperature at which water boils was arbitrarily set to 100. The increments between 0 and 100 were then created. So water in the Celsius system always freezes at 0 degrees Celsius and always boils at 100. Lord Kelvin, who was a, a chemist in the 1800s, also created the Kelvin system. The Kelvin system and Celsius are related to each other by the following equation. A temperature in Kelvin is equal to the temperature in Celsius plus 273. In the Kelvin system, zero is called absolute zero. Absolute zero is the temperature at which particles cease to move. Even at zero degrees Celsius, or even particles that are within a solid, are still moving. They're still vibrating in place. However, once we hit absolute zero, all of that movement completely ceases. So let's do comparisons of temperatures. Water boils in the Kelvin system at 373. That's 100 plus 273. In the Celsius system, it's 110. In the Fahrenheit system, it's 212. Body temperature in the Kelvin system is 310. 
In the Celsius system, it's 37. In the Fahrenheit system, it's 98.6. Room temperature is 293 to 295. In Celsius, it's 20 to 22. In the Fahrenheit system, normal room temperature is 68 to 72. Water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius, but at 273 degrees Kelvin. In the Fahrenheit system, water freezes at 32. In the Kelvin system, absolute zero is zero. In the Celsius system, it's negative 273. In the Fahrenheit system, it's negative 459. A new SI unit that you're going to be introduced to in chemistry is called the mole. So what exactly is a mole? When I think of the mole, I think of it more like the term dozen. In a dozen, I have 12 individual units, or 12 eggs in a dozen of eggs. A mole consists of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd individual units, or in this case, atoms. And together, they, comp or they comprise one mole of an element. So if I have one mole of hydrogen, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Where does 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd come from? This is called Avogadro's number, and it is a huge number. You have to keep in mind that atoms are very, 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 very small. Even in a small amount of substance, you have a lot of them. This concludes our lecture. Thanks for watching.